The following interview involves commercial content. The products and services featured appear as paid advertising. Disneyland Resort, the happiest place on earth and one of the busiest attractions in the world. But what does it take to make the magic happen every day for the past 60 years? Well, that requires going behind the scenes with the unsung heroes of Disneyland Resort. We are just behind the main gate of Disneyland Park, the happiest place on earth, and you better believe it, thousands of smiling faces just pass through the gates to wrap up their magical day. And our day is just about to begin. You are about to see something that nobody ever gets to see, a behind the scenes look at Disneyland Park and Disney California Adventure. After all the food and the rides and the entertainment, the fireworks and all the parades, you think Disney's magical during the day. Wait until you see it at night. This is Disney After Dark. It is just after 10.30 here at Disney California Adventure Park. And just moments ago, Paradise Pier was packed full of people in anticipation of watching Disney's amazing nightly water show, World of Color. Well, now the park is completely closed. There's no one here except us and the maintenance crew who's getting ready to fine tune the show for tomorrow. We're gonna find out exactly what all this is behind me and how the magic of the show all works. You wouldn't know it in the daytime, but beneath the surface of Disney California Adventure Park's Paradise Bay exists a city of fountains that magically rises to the surface every night post-show for maintenance. Each device closely examined, all with a very specific purpose. These are our table fountains, and there are over 1,500 devices on the table surface, ranging from our standard grid fountain, which is the bulk of the show. It's the basis and platform for the uh, foundation of the show. And then we've got our quick action response fountains, which we call our chasers. And they chase in really quick patterns across the tables, back and forth. OK. Uh, and then we have our moving fountains, which are essentially, they can move in 360 degree patterns. Uh, and they range in height from three feet to 60 feet in the air of water. How long does that take you to check each night? Uh, we go point by point. So we get a few notes from the show crew of what may have been a little deficient throughout the performance, and we'll go and take a look at that. And we also have uh, corrective or, or preventative maintenance tasks that pop up every month, every week, every quarter, and then we go and do a performance check on everything. Table number two of this engineering marvel holds three projector enclosures that cast world-famous Disney images on three missed screens. Amazing audiences every time. In addition, lasers help to bring this show to life. They drop beautiful patterns in the sky. During the Wally scenes, one of my favorites, it does like these little nebulous uh, drawings with the fountains. It interacts with the water and it draws these really great images. In order to make this magic happen, seven technicians operate the show. Then, while you are sleeping, six to eight cast members resurrect and work on the fountain tables, along with a support team who helps repair as needed. We are a 24-hour operation at World of Color. This is absolutely fascinating. I mean, the show itself is awe-inspiring, but when you actually see what goes behind it, too, I mean, it just kind of takes your breath away. It is pretty uh, amazing and cool, and uh, we enjoy the, you know, the pleasure that it brings to the guests. Yeah, and I imagine there's a lot of pride, though, behind this kind of work. Because oh, from what I understand, this show's pretty groundbreaking for the technology that we're seeing here and to make this whole thing come together. It was something that no one thought could ever be done, to uh, raise fountains out of the water. Uh, this lagoon looks like any other pool of water during the day. You don't see anything. And then at nighttime, it comes alive. Everything rises up out of the water. And then we have this really beautiful, colorful, visual show that performs for our guests. From dancing water to talking cars. Slow down! You're not racing yet. Yeah. We cruised on over to Cars Land to see what happens at Radiator Springs Racers when the lights go out. We had exclusive access inside the ride, some things we can't show you. But we did get to see Doc and Mater in action with the overnight crew as they ran tests, making sure that guests have the best show possible. We're actually by the audio animatronic character Mater, so can we get an example kind of how you guys would test this? Sure, okay. yeah. Uh, Chris. Coming, Sheriff! Howdy! Here for the big race, huh? It's gonna be fun! That was awesome. Yeah, it is. That was so incredibly awesome. So there, there's someone over in the corner kind of running uh, the test, pushing some buttons. What specifically are they looking for? 
So basically, uh, our, uh, Chris is running the, uh, the console right now. Uh -huh. He's making sure that, you know, the sound, the eyes, the movement, everything on the figure operates the way it's supposed to operate. So when the, the, the guests come in the morning, everything's running the way it's supposed to run. And I imagine just the expressions on all the guests' faces are just perfect payoff, right? Yes. Yeah, for all your hard work during the night hours, when everybody else is sleeping, you're exactly. making sure that the next yes. day is magical. And that's something, you know, I always uh, emphasize to uh, our cast members is, you know, how we can make some little kid magical memories for the rest of their lives, you know, but seeing the character acting the way they act and how they interact when they're right in the attraction. Just making sure it's the perfect experience. You've seen the overnight checks and balances it takes to bring a Disney show and ride to life, but you won't believe what it takes to transform the park overnight when Disney After Dark returns. Have you ever gone to Disneyland Resort and you swear the parks changed overnight? Well, your eyes aren't fooling you because it probably did. Welcome to Disneyland's Main Street at night, a construction zone. Literally, we had to wear hard hats. During our visit, they happened to be loading in Halloween time, but similar to the summer season or Christmas, the magic transforming the parks into these seasonal overlays requires a similar overnight dedication. So Chris, tell me about the overall kind of a resort enhancement for Disney. So we do the enhancement for Christmas, for Halloween, for Memorial Day, red, white, and blue, and we do it here at Disneyland Park, Disneyland California Adventure, all of our hotels and in downtown Disney. Wow, so you guys do a lot of work. We do a lot of work, and we also add all of our window displays in that. So we decorate the windows for all of the holidays, and we do the props in the park year-round. 365 days out of the year, Disney cast members are planning, fabricating, and creating the pumpkins, the garland, the wreaths, the windows, working with Imagineers and vendors to make the park picture perfect for every season. It is truly non-stop. Tell us really quick about some of the touches that you guys are doing this evening. So right now we're setting up for Halloween, so we're on Main Street, Main Street USA, and today we're putting our pumpkins up, about 300 pumpkins, in all of the balconies on the Main Street houses. And the pumpkins have been carved by some of the artists in-house, and so we've got Gibson Girl, and we've got Abraham Lincoln, and all sorts of little designs on the pumpkins, so when people walk down Main Street, they can look up and identify and see if they can see what we've done with the pumpkins. Up to 30 Disney cast members will take three nights putting up 300 pumpkins, along with bunting, tie-downs, leaves, and all sorts of fall touches. What are we watching behind us? There's, there's a lift right behind us. Well, uh, he's installing our exterior building pumpkins, so uh, we're making sure that that's uh, safe and secure up there, uh, and then he's going to run the wiring into the building, and then we'll have the pumpkins lit up and they'll flicker just like jack-o'-lanterns. And the overnight crew takes a lot of pride in sprinkling the proverbial fairy dust. I love transforming the park from nothing, like from 4th of July, red, white, and blue, to Halloween overnight. So when the guests come in, they come in and they see all of the pumpkins and the fall layer. And the same for Christmas, because we kind of just transform it. People come in and it's like we're elves in a sense, you know? I love making the magic. I mean, we're here with some really talented artists and we get to come into the park and see people get really jazzed up and excited about what we're doing and it's just a beautiful place to be. But where does all this stuff come from? And better yet, where do they keep it all? Right here at the Cerritos Warehouse. So Don, we're in the middle of a massive warehouse full of stuff. What is all this stuff? <laughs> We're here at the Cerritos Warehouse, and um, basically, resort enhancement here, we take care of everything from holiday decor, as you know, um, the Halloween, the red, white, and blue, and the Christmas layer. But the things that you don't know about behind the scenes are all of the window displays. We have over 350 windows that we have a full team that takes care of four seasonal overlays for those windows and change outs. Um, we have a full team of our props crew uh, they take care of all of the attraction props for the resort as well. We have a full rope and net team and they hand make all of the ropes and the nets and the themed 
leather lashing in Frontierland on, on the railings that you see. Wow. Uh, we have a full, what we're here right now in the upholstery and the seamstress uh, team work uh, area. And they take care of everything from awnings, umbrellas, shade control, seats, attraction seating, um, haunted mansion seat behind us for the endless hallway. Um, and we have a full team that installs all tables, chairs, umbrellas, and awnings as well for the resort. You heard her right. Walt Disney Imagineering, or commonly known as WDI, creates and makes everything. They do use vendors, but most of the items you see in the park are custom made. What about Christmas? Yes. I understand that is a really huge holiday for Disney. Yes, it's a big piece of our, our workload here. Um, as you know, we put everything in in November. We start the installation actually October 31st at midnight. Mm -hmm. It's about a three week installation and everything is up and running by you know, mid-November. Um, it stays up, we pull it down in January and come February we start fabricating all year long here at the warehouse. Wow, so yeah. it's almost a complete year commitment. It's a, it's a total commitment all year long, absolutely. And is this where you do a lot of the planning, is in this warehouse? Yes, we do a lot of the planning. Uh, we work with our WDI partners on the design and make sure that we're keeping in you know, the theme and, and the era. Um, but we do all of the fabrication here. Um, we load from this location into you know, 10 big 24 foot trucks and we take it out, we install it. And we're not just talking a couple of decorations here or there either. I mean, you're talk oh, it's, it's amazing how elaborate everything is. Yes. How many bulbs would you say that you guys have? Oh my gosh. I, I, it would be in the thousands. Um, if you want to talk garland, we have about two and a half miles of garland just on Main Street alone. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So that's just Main Street? That's just Main Street. We have over 300 trees resort wide. Uh, countless. 300? 300. Oh, 300 I totally trees. didn't expect that. Everything from the tiny little trees in Storybook to the great big 60 foot tree on Main Street. Decorations and props aren't the only thing changing overnight. All Disney Resort horticulture is planted while you are in bed. Working on 17,000 trees, 100,000 shrubs, and planting 1 million annual bedding plants per year. And I noticed not only do you have this cart here, but you also have this cart of the yes. coleus. Am I saying that right? Yes. So is your crew, are you guys going to plant all of this tonight? Oh yeah, it's all going in. We have about 45 flats for each trailer, uh, over a couple hundred flats for this planting tonight. Okay, so just for tonight. Yeah. How long will something like planting all of this take you? It will take us um, about four to five hours. About four to five hours? Yeah, so take out the plants, rototill, and then go back in with the new plants. And how many people do you have working for you tonight? A uh, crew of about eight to ten people. Eight to ten people can do all that? Yeah, they work real fast. Tell me, I really want to hire these guys. <laughs> There are a whopping 800 species of plants represented in the Disneyland Resort, and every single plant is themed within the resort's many different lands. So what, what type of uh, um, plants can we expect in certain areas? I imagine they differ, right? They do. For instance, behind us at the Matterhorn, it's kind of an alpine meadow theme. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of uh, Dior cedars or Atlas cedars, uh, birches, things that fit that uh, alpine meadow theme. Disney's famous Jungle Cruise transports you to a rainforest. The lush green vegetation is specifically selected to sweep you down several major tropical rivers of Asia, Africa, and South America. Some of these plants have been rooted here since the first boat on the cruise set sail, while other areas of the resort have plants that are older than Disneyland itself. One tree is over 100 years old. It's actually a bonsai tree, so oh, it's only it? about uh, two to three feet tall, and we bonsai it. And, uh, and keep it all yeah. cute and tiny. Yeah. Oh. For storybook, yep. Yeah. This next question's a little selfish. What would it take for me to hire you and your crew to come do my yard? <laughs> a lot. A lot, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I am completely blown away. You think Disney is a production during the day? It's a whole new production at night. We are surrounded by about a thousand cast members, each working very hard with their own specific tasks to make sure that every single detail is met so guests can have the most amazing, magical Disney experience the next day. The effort is amazing. What we thought was going to be a ghost town has turned out to be a bustling city of Disney magic. Coming up, see what happens when the third shift begins when Disney After Dark returns.
We've been behind the scenes discovering what it takes to transform the most magical place on Earth every night. From plants to decorations, but the magic wouldn't be complete without the right clothes. In addition to the attractions at Disneyland Resort's two theme parks, the attention to detail in TLC is also given to the almost 900 audio animatronics figures. Like my pal here, Mr. Abraham Lincoln. Every night, costuming and hair makeup teams work effortlessly, carefully primping Mr. Abraham Lincoln. In order to maintain the integrity of the set and show, they wear hospital booties when approaching the figure to assure they leave no footprints or marks in the area. They have a good reason to care. The attention paid to the historical accuracy of his costume is impeccable. Disney's crew worked closely with a curator at the Smithsonian Institute to get exact details of Lincoln's actual garments. This integrity is carried through all of Disney's costuming. Each Disney audio animatronic figure has three costumes of the same design, one in cleaning, one in the costume shop for repairs, and one that is used for wear that day. In rides like Small World, clothing tends to wear in specific places because of repetitive movement, meaning these happy little dolls play dress up a lot. Not to mention just one of these cute little outfits can contain as many as a dozen or so different fabrics and trims. Over in the high seas of the Pirates of the Caribbean, these costumes go through serious battle with over 70 swashbuckling audio animatronics decked out to the nines, many with multiple complex layers. Even dancing chickens and ducks dress up in Splash Mountain, putting this attraction's costumed figure count to over 80. This and so much more is all under the care of a highly skilled team of about six seamstresses in one costumer, all making daily rounds of the entire resort prior to park opening, 365 days of the year. Now that's magic. Including the hundreds of costumes worn by Disney cast members in both parks, whether in stores, restaurants, rides, or parades, every aspect of Disney is a show. It is just before 6 a.m., the sun's beginning to rise and cast members are busily cleaning up before opening hours. The most important work is being done right now, and that's the final touches of the third shift. Polishing, scrubbing, spraying, and wiping, these guys would make Mary Poppins herself proud. Every single night, they work hard to put the latest shine on the park before the doors open. There isn't a speck of brass that goes unbuffed, a window that goes unsqueegeed. By day, this park is spotless. And the shop crews are vacuuming, folding and creasing so guests can take home a piece of that Disney magic. But before we exit the park so the day can begin, we marched over to exclusive access to Disney floats. For thousands of families, nothing may be more important than seeing and experiencing one of Disney's many signature parades. So John, where are we? We are in the Disneyland Parade Warehouse. It's where we keep all of our floats. Okay, and how many floats do we have in here? Oh gosh, I couldn't even tell you. There are 15 floats in the Sensational Parade here. Mm -hmm. And there are nine large ones, and then six of our smaller floats. We've got Christmas Parade in here. Can't show you that yet, because it's not Christmas. We have Halloween yes. that's here too. So um, gosh, I would say close to 50 floats in here. Um, how many performers are there though in, in these parades? There are 96 performers uh, that actually go down the street. And then we have seven musicians. Our drum line that's at the beginning of this is so fun. And of course, Mickey Mouse is our lead drummer that comes down the street. So yes. uh, 96, seven, but kind of behind the scenes, we have 23 parade support people. Wow. Then we have seven parade leads, a stage manager, but that isn't anything compared to the 25 people who work from three o'clock in the morning to get ready for a parade at four o'clock in the afternoon. No kidding, yes. so every night. Every night. There's a staff of people that work on these floats. So what are some of the things that they would be doing? Well, there's a little bit of painting sometimes. You might get a, uh, a one of our chimney sweeps, our uh -huh. new chimney sweeps, yes. might brush up against it and there could be something that would happen. Uh, our custodio comes in and cleans up just like Danny over there. And uh, we make sure that uh, everything's bright and shiny and make sure that everything looks terrific. So it looks as fantastic from the one day to the next. 
Uh, it's crazy. I, I like to say the parade looks exactly like it did when we opened. And I have to say, one of my absolute favorite floats in here right now is the Tangled Float, because I loved that movie. I thought it was fantastic. And this braid is amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, the braid, oh, Rapunzel's braid. Well, there's about 52 feet of braid there, mm -hmm. and it takes our designers, because uh, we want to make sure that Rapunzel has a beautiful braid. Uh, it takes them about six months to actually braid it with all the intricate flowers and everything else that's in it. So it's, a, it's quite a job. Six months? Six months. So do you replace it every six months then too? Oh yes. So basically when the person's done and it's replaced then they have to start the next braid. And not only are they working on the braid, they're working on putting really finishing touches to the Christmas yes. parade or they're putting something really fun for our Halloween parade. So, so it's nonstop. It's nonstop. Really and truly, uh, everyone who works in here, they're the unsung heroes. They really are. Though we have like all of those people that help to bring the parade down the street, those 25 people that are here from three o'clock in the morning till when the float actually goes down Main Street, they're really and truly my heroes. Exactly. There are so many layers. Yeah. When, you, when you think about it, you've got floats, you've got music, you've got choreography, you have all of our maintenance folks that are taking care of us all night. It's quite amazing. And on average, how long is a parade? It takes about a half an hour mm -hmm. to go what we call gate to gate. Mm -hmm. We enter up at Small World area, go all the way down our parade route, and then out at Town Square, and it takes about a half an hour. So a half hour show, but you work nonstop around the clock for a very long time to make sure everything is just fantastic. Twice a day sometimes, too. Twice a day so sometimes. the parade comes back, they start working again, we do another parade. And John, what do you love so much about doing this? The people uh, watching our guests, mm -hmm. I love going out and standing with all the guests and watching it go by and seeing all the kids wave to their favorite princess or Mickey or ooh and ah and everything. Um, it makes me very proud. From the world famous attractions to the celebratory parades and the stunning decor, right down to the smallest Mickey Mouse sized detail, nothing is left undone. The parks are as perfect each morning as they were when Walt Disney himself first greeted guests. The attractions are ready, both parks are perfect, and another day begins. So the next time you visit the happiest place on earth, you know how much goes into making each day just as magical as the last in Disney After Dark.